Clap your hands. 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 Clap your hands if you really love Jesus. Clap your hands if you're a believer. Clap your hands if you really love Jesus. Clap your hands if you're a believer. Clap your hands if you really love Jesus. Clap your hands. Jesus, your name. Jesus, we lift your name on high. If you really love Jesus, clap your hands if you're a believer. Clap your hands if you really love Jesus. Clap your hands if you're a believer. Clap your hands if you really love Jesus. Clap your hands if you're a believer. Clap your hands if you really love Jesus. Jesus, we lift your name on high. Jesus, we lift. Come thou fount of every blessing. All right, our hymn is number 400. We're going to learn a new hymn today. <laughs> We're learning a new hymn for. 
with some, and for those that already know, we're lifting our voices for one of the old standards of the church. Come thou fount of every blessing, tune my heart to sing thy praise. Let's open our mouths and give God praise this morning as we sing. Come thou fount. Let's sing. Come thou fount of every blessing to my heart to sing thy grace. Streams of mercy never ceasing, call for songs of loudest praise. Teach me songs. like we used to. Amen. Amen. Somebody take a seat. And if you've got to be, you've got to be at least 50 or 60 years old to remember that every Sunday morning, no matter what hymn, it always ended with Amen. Amen. All right, come on, brother, uh, Minister, uh, hold, Minister Mahaffey is coming at this time, and he's going to lead us into the rest of the service. God bless you this morning. It's so good to see all of you. Amen. Will let the church say amen. The church say amen again. Come thou fount of every blessing. I think in my 35 years, I might only sung that here maybe three times. Amen. Amen. But we will go right on into our order of worship, which we will have our Old Testament reading, which will be coming from the book of Daniel, the third chapter, which will be verses 10 through 28. And then we will have our New Testament coming from the book of Ephesians, chapter 6, verses 10 through 18. And for our Old Testament reading, it will be read for your hearing by myself, and your New Testament reading will be read by Miss Takia Glass. Amen. Amen. So, Old Testament. Old Testament will be Daniel chapter 3, starting at verse 10. Oh. 
Amen. And it'll be read by actually young James Moody. Amen. The church say amen. amen. Welcome, welcome, welcome. You, O king, have made a decree that everyone who hears the sound of the horn, pipe, lyre, trigon, harp, drum, and entire musical assemble shall fall down and worship the golden statue, and whoever does not fall down and worship shall be thrown into a furnace of blazing fire. There are certain Jews whom you must appoint in over the affairs of the province of Babylon, Sadrach, M Meshach, huh? Meshach, and Abednego, these men pay no heed to you, O king. They do not serve your gods, and they do not worship the golden statue that you have set up. The Nebach Nezer in Nebuchadnezzar. Nebuchadnezzar, in furious rage, commanded the Sadrach, Me Mezach, Meshach, and Abednego be brought in. So they brought those men before the king. Neb Neb Nebuchadnezzar. Nebuchadnezzar said to them, Is it true, O Shadrach, Mezach, <laughs> Meshach, <laughs> and Abednego, that you do not serve my gods and you do not worship the golden statue that I have set up? Now, if you are ready, when you hear the sound of the horn, pipe, lyre, trigon, harp, drum, and entire musical assemble, assembly, you should fall down and worship the statue that I have made. But if you do not worship, you shall immediately be thrown into a furnace of blazing fire, and who is the God who will deliver you out of my hand? Shadrach, Shadrach Meshach, and, and Abednego answered the king, Oh, oh, Nebuchadnezzar, we have no need to present a defense to you in this matter. If our God, whom we serve, is able to deliver us from the furnace of blazing fire and out of your hand, O oh, king, let me deliver us, let him deliver us. But if not, be it to you, O oh, king, that we will not serve your gods and we will not worship the golden statue that you have set up. Then Nebuchadnezzar was filled with rage against Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, that his face was distorted. He ordered the furnace heated up seven times more than was customary. And ordered some of the strongest guards in the army to bind Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and to throw them into the furnace of blazing fire. So the men were bound, still wearing their turnip, their, uh huh, and their hats and their garments, and they were thrown into the furnace of blazing fire. Because the king's command was urgent and the furnace was so overheated, the raging flames killed the man who lifted Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. But the three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, fell down bound into the furnace of blazing fire. The king Nebuchadnezzar was astonished and rose up quickly. He said to his counselors, was it not three men that threw into bound, and bound into the fire? They answered the king, true, O king. He replied, but I see four men unbound walking in the middle of the fire. Okay. And they are not hurt. And the four... And the fourth has been the parents of God. Nebuchadnezzar and then approached the door of the furnace of the blazing fire and said, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, servants of the Most High God, come from out, come out, come here. So Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego came out from the fire, and the Shadrach, the perfect 
and the governors and the king's counselors gathered together and saw that the fire had not had any power over the bodies of those dead. The hair of their heads was not sighed, their tunics were not scorched, and not even the smell of the fire came from them. Nebuchadnezzar said, Blessed be the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who hasn't sent the, his angel and delivered his servants who trusted in him. They disobeyed the king's command and yelled up to their bodies rather than serve and worship any god except their own god. Good morning, church. My name is Takia Glass, and please stand. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his power. Put on the whole armor of God so that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For our struggle is not against blood and flesh, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers of this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God so that you may be able to withstand on the evil day. And having prevailed against everything to stand firm, stand therefore and belt your waist with truth and put on the blessed plate of righteousness and lace up your sandals and preparation for the gospel of peace. With all of these, take the shield of faith with which you will be able to quench all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Pray in the spirit at all times in every prayer and supplication to that end, stay woke and always persevere in supplication for all the saints, for the word of God and for the people of God. Be Please be seated. Let the church say amen. Let the church say amen again. Amen. You know we've come to our moment in service to where we can pray and have a little talk with Jesus and even though we are in COVID protocols with our mask and everything going I still want to take a moment to just allow you to yell out a person's name that's close to your heart a family's name that's close to your heart so we can put it in the atmosphere and we can get it up there it don't matter if you say a name the same time as somebody else's because God hears all and he knows your heart so if there's a person or a family that is on your heart, if you could just lift that up to the Lord before we go to the throne in prayer. Sometimes some old hymns hit a look different when you get older. Jesus, 
something about the name Jesus that just makes demons flee. Something about the name Jesus that just lets you know that everything is going to be all right. Something about the name Jesus. Sometimes when you just don't know what to say, just say Jesus. The sweetest name that I know. God, I thank you for waking me up this morning, starting me on my way. God, I thank you for life. I thank you for health. God, I thank you for strength. God, I thank you for the sickness that's in my body. God, I thank you for all of the good days just as well as all of the bad days. God, I thank you for sitting high and looking low. God, I thank you for being a friend when I thought I was friendless. God, I thank you for being a doctor when the doctor said it was nothing else that could be done. God, I thank you for being a mama when I had nobody shoulder to cry on. God, I thank you. God, we walk through this everyday life and we can only do it because of you. And for that, we say thank you. God, we thank you for your son, Jesus. We thank you for sending him down here in human form to take on all the sins of the world and to die on the cross. And God, we thank you that you loved us so much that you let him rise three days later with all power in his hand. God, we thank you for the big things in life and we thank you even more for the little things in life. The things that we take for granted, God. God, we thank you for letting our feet touch on this side of the land of the living. God, we thank you for the bread that's in the cupboard. We thank you for the water that's in the refrigerator. God, we thank you for the job that we have. We thank you for the little coins that we can rub together. God, we just thank you. But in the same voice that we say thank you, God, we want to say that we're sorry for not always walking right, not always talking right, not always thinking right, not always doing your will. But in spite of, you still you still love us. You still lead us. You still guide us. And God, for that, we say thank you. God, we just ask that you be with the children as they embark on a new school year and they continue to go and to study to show that themselves approved. God, we just ask that you be with them on an everyday basis. God, let them be able to retain the materials that is given to them. God, let them be able to sit there and be studious and have good behavior in class. God, we just, we know that you can do it because if you did it before, you can do it again. God, we thank you for the healing in the bodies of the sick and the shut-in. God, I thank you for allowing my uncle to be here this morning. God, it's good to see Uncle Frank in church this morning. And God, we just know that if you can continue to heal him and you can continue to heal everybody else, that if I was to ever get sick, you would be able to heal me too. God, we thank you for our church in Andrew's Chapel. We thank you for our leader and Reverend Reed and his family, First Lady and their children. God, continue to strengthen them. Continue to build them up. Continue to give Reverend Reed the vision for this household and continue to let him make that vision come true. God, be with every ministry that is associated with Andrew's Chapel. Continue to keep, let the ministries keep you first. Be with every family, every household that is associated with Andrew's Chapel. God, we just ask that whatever it is that they may need, that you meet them right now at their point in need. God, let the people see your face. Let the people know that you are with them even when they may be in the middle of a storm. God, continue to just keep that hedge of protection around us as we go on the highways and the byways of life. We take for granted that we leave home knowing that we will come back, but somebody left yesterday and didn't come back home, God. So just continue to be with us. Continue to lead and guide us. God, be with everyone that is associated within this service right now. Continue to allow us to put you first. Be with the people in the music room, I mean, in the sound room in the back. Be with all of the musicians. Be with the choir. Be with the man that is coming to stand in John's shoes this morning. Be with Minister McBride and give him a word from on high and touch him from the top of his head to the sole of his feet. And at the end of his message, someone can come running. I yield, I yield. What must I do to follow the king? God, we love you and we thank you. And everything that you do, we do not take for granted. And in everything we do, we will give you all the honor, all the glory, and all of the praise. And it's in your son's Jesus' name that we pray. 
And every heart said amen. Amen. And amen. Now I need y'all to entertain me for a minute. Can we stand on our feet for a second and just sing Amazing Grace just a little bit? One thing about me, I ain't going to beg you to praise God. Because see, the person beside you just got a blessing this week that they was not expected. The other person beside you just got a good report from the doctor that they wasn't expected. Somebody just got a promotion at work, so you need to praise so you can get yours. But I guarantee you this. Ah. <laughs> Either y'all gonna praise with me, or you gonna watch me. But one thing about me, I'ma give him what's due for me. Cause see, you don't know the week that I just had. And you don't know the storms that I go through on an everyday basis. So the fact that I'm hearing somebody pulpit giving God praise, that's a blessing. Somebody don't feel good right now, just praise them, I bet you feel better. Somebody got a headache right now, just praise them, I bet it go away. Somebody got back pain right now. Just give them a little chuck. I bet it go away. I bet you won't try. I bet you won't try. I ain't gonna 
with your own. Because if it's in you, it's just in you. Ain't nobody got to egg you on to get it up out of you. If it's in you, it's just in you. Because see, the thing is, when you praise, it ain't pretty. It ain't supposed to be pretty. When you're in your prayer closet and you're laying down and you're praying, I bet that ain't pretty. So why be pretty when you're sitting in church? You ain't pretty when you're begging for a healing. You ain't pretty when you're begging for a blessing. So get, go and get ugly now. Because see, one thing about me, I'm ugly in real life. So it don't matter if I get ugly while I praise. It is what it is. <laughs> oh, I ain't going to hurt him just... I promise you I ain't. Because see, one thing about me, God has been too good to me. Hallelujah. Too good to me. He been too good to you. I look around this sanctuary and I see folk who was sick and is now healed. I see folk who was broke and now got a little bit of money. I see folk who didn't have a car and now they can go from point A to point B. I see children who was lost and now they found. I see folk who done laid on this altar and cried their eyes out for a healing and now they are okay. Thank you. They ain't gotta get pushed. And y'all help me, so now when I go through my matriculation in life, you know what? I done seen Uncle Alvin lay on this altar and pray his eyes out for his kids. So now I know what to do for mine. See, you never know who is watching you. Oh, thank you. So if you don't praise, how your kids gonna praise? Hallelujah. If you don't know how to shout, how your kids gonna know how to shout? Hallelujah. If you don't know a hymn, how your children gonna know a hymn? <laughs> I'm just saying. God has been too good, too good. And if you don't believe it, just keep living. Keep living. But all right, come on, children, we're going to sing. We're going to sing. We're going to sing this song. Mm -hmm. We're going to sing this song. After we sing this song, Rev is going to come up, and he is going to introduce our minister for this morning. And after that, we'll sing another song, and then we're going to get a word from on high. Amen. Amen. Anybody ready for a word from on high? From Minister McBride. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Before we sing this song real quick, y'all need to know how hard these babies work. They've been working so hard for you. Can you give them a hand just for even being here? Just for being present? They could be anywhere else right now. And there's so many other things to do in the world right now. And church does not seem to be important to this generation. Let's give them a standing ovation for being here to give God all the praise and all the honor. Come on, y'all. God is good all the time. And he's going to show you through your babies how good he can be. Hallelujah.
Let's show our children some. Let's show our children some love. Amen. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and wisdom begins as we learn to worship the Lord. Thank God, our children are learning to to worship the Lord. The job of every parent is to prepare their child to go out and live on their own in such a way that they bring honor to their parents and glory to the Lord. You do know that our job is to get them ready to leave us and go out and make a mark for themselves. So we thank all of our, our leaders. Uh, they're working hard. I was with them on Wednesday evening as they were rehearsing and rehearsed late into the evening. Thank God for our our leaders, and thank God for these children. Amen. Amen. Praise God. I'm delighted to stand before you this morning with uh, this privilege of introducing to some and presenting to others our speaker for this occasion. 
Our evangelist this morning hails from Stamford, Connecticut. He's come a long way. His journey to here has been a long one, but God has blessed him on the way. A native of Stamford, Connecticut, educated in the uh, Stanford public school system, and after graduating from West Hill High School, he enrolled and attended the um, Benedict College, a little school over there in South Carolina. Benedict College, amen. Some of you know about Benedict, where he uh, earned his bachelor's in elementary education, and after that, he earned a master's in administration and education from Georgia State University, 2018. Now he is currently studying on his journey, uh, preparing himself in for his doctoral as he is studying at Georgia State. Say amen, somebody. There are many things I could share about him, many accomplishments, many awards. We could talk about the Men Armed with Knowledge Award that uh, for the year of, of 2015, I believe, and then honored as the Martin Luther King Jr. Community Service Award in 2017. Uh, other things he is involved in as we could share. Uh, Minister Tarif McBride is currently serving as the youth minister, youth pastor at the Dodd Sterling United Methodist Church, one of our sister churches right there in southeast Atlanta. And he shares a love of Christ with the children and the youth there with great enthusiasm and excitement. Uh, his favorite song is, Great is Thy Faithfulness. And uh, someone said, why is that your favorite song? And his response was, if you knew what the Lord has done for me, how good God has been to me. God was faithful to me when I was unfaithful to him. And therefore, my favorite song is, great is his faithfulness. There are many things we could share, but most of all, we want you to know that before us today is a young man of God working towards preparing himself to serve the Lord even better as he journeys this road of Christian love and life. Won't you join with me in welcoming as I present to some and introduce to others after we've heard from our choir, we shall hear from Minister Tarif McBride. Put your hands together and let's greet him as our choir returns to share with us. I know it's on you all now. And... All right, put your hands together. The choir is coming. Let's encourage these young folk. Amen, amen, amen. And you know what? Where is that James Moody? That young man, where is he? Where'd he go to? Have him come back up here. There's one more thing I want. He did that thing too quick for us this morning. We need to hear this again. Somebody needs to know whether you're worshiping virtually at home, on your job, or even as you are here, we need you to know one thing. You know what that one thing is? Tell everybody, pull that microphone around where they can hear you and tell them what they need to know. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Wait a minute, hold on, wait a minute. Wait a minute, turn that microphone up so we can hear it. Amen, somebody. Amen. Amen. You are welcome at Andrews Chapel, United Methodist Church. James, thank you, sir. God bless you. Thank you. Right there. All right, it's just another one that we all know. And it just simply says, How great is our God.
Now, if you know that he's great, why don't you put your hands together and let's give our great God some great praise. Now, y'all could do a little bit better than that. He's a great God. He woke you up this morning. He started you on your way this morning. You opened the refrigerator, had food in the refrigerator. Hallelujah to Jesus. How great is our God. You just said it, how great is our God. Come on, tell him. He is a great God. And all. Say it like you mean it. How great. How great. Amen. We thank God for being a great God, even when we don't deserve him to be a great God to us. He is still great. Would you all do me a favor and would you please help me celebrate the angel of this house that is in the person of Reverend Reed. We thank God for him. I always say that a church's energy always matches who their leader are. And I want you to know that you all have a wonderful leader. All of you are wonderful people. Um, just from the door, from the parking lot coming in, um, you all are very kind, and I'm just grateful to be here this morning. I am grateful to be here this morning. I do bring you greetings from the Dodd Sterling United Methodist Church, where my pastor is Reverend Eric Powell. I am excited, and I um, had to remind him so I wouldn't get in trouble later that I was coming here this morning. And so he said, yep, I remember. And he told me, uh, don't embarrass me. So I'm going to do my best not to embarrass Dodd Sterling. Um, and again, of course, I'm not sure if she's here. I haven't had the pleasure of meeting her, but I do want to honor the First Lady of this church, um, First Lady Reed, if she's here. Not here? Okay. But we still thank God for her anyway. Why don't we still celebrate wherever she may be at this time? And I do want to say to this choir. You all are, first of all, y'all sound amazing. Y'all sound amazing. And you all are brave. Because I can't sing. I can't sing. But you all are brave and done an amazing job. And of course, to this dynamic music ministry, those on the drums and organ and piano, and I believe that was the guitar. Um, you, all, you all have an amazing, amazing um, music ministry. Um, there is, amen, let's give them a hand. Um, as I was uh, preparing to be here um, this morning, um, I'm, there was a song, and I told you I'm not a singer, so I'm gonna need your help, because um, I heard you singing. Um, and it's simply, I'll say yes, Lord, yes, to your will and to your way. I'll say yes, Lord, yes, I will trust you and obey. When your spirit speaks to me, with my whole heart I'll agree, and my answer will be yes. Lord, yes. Now, y'all know. Why don't y'all help me sing? I'll say, I'll say yes, Lord, yes, to your will and to your way. I'll say yes, Lord, yes, I will trust you and obey. When your spirit speaks to me, with my whole heart I'll agree. And my answer will be yes, Lord, yes. I want to do that one more time. I'll say yes, Lord, yes, to your will and to your way. I'll say yes, Lord, yes, 
I will trust you and obey when your spirit speaks to me with my whole heart I'll agree and my answer yes Lord yes I wanted to minister that song this morning um, if you have your Bibles if you would be kind to turn to Proverbs 18 and 21 and I know that you all have been in a revival uh, for a return and there were some others but I know that today's message is included about a resurge. Proverbs 18 and 21. And it reads, that's again Proverbs 18 verse 21. Life and death are in the power of the tongue, and those who love it will eat its fruit. That is the word of God for the people of God. And our response is thanks be to God. Words have power. Words can build you up and words can tear you down. And for our subject or theme, I thought it would be fitting because of this revival series that you've been in, and I do believe that you all have been revived this month, that I feel like my job this morning is to make sure that you do this, and this simply is just speak the word. Speak the word. Why don't you tell your neighbor, speak the word. 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 You have been in a uh, revival series, and it is, um, from what I've heard and have read about, it has been dynamic. And I just believe that if we, once we leave here today, knowing that we can speak the word, we're going to be all right. According to this particular proverb, one should take care and to watch his or her words and to be slow to speak. Many times we let things get to us and we get so disoriented that some of us, we say not so nice things to each other. We use other words besides speaking in tongue to other people. And now, you know, that could have been even on the way to church. <laughs> Somebody done cut you off or made you miss that green light. And we might have said something that we know we had no business saying, Pastor Reed. But understand that the power that you have. I work in the school system and I always remind my students that don't use the word, I can't because you will believe that you can. I uh, believe it was Thursday, one of my students, he's very active, and I'll use the word active because we in church. Uh, after benediction, you ask me what I really think and I think I'll tell you. Yes, that other tongue, Pastor Reed. He was so excited about coming to school, and he is, he's a wild one. And he comes and he jumps, good morning. I said, good morning, go have a seat. And he goes and he puts his head down, and he says, I just, I, I just can't do it today. <laughs> now, this is coming from a first grader puts his head down, I, 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 I can't do it today. And 
And so I asked, I went and I said, well, well what is it that you can't do? I, I, I just, I just, I can't talk, I can't work. I just, I can't do anything. I'm just so tired. And I said, well, you're gonna watch what you say today because I can't are words that we cannot use. That sentence, we cannot use. In, you know, we have this phrase that, um, that you, you have to be careful because you'll eat your words. And those words will bounce back to you. I always tell parents, be careful of what you call your child or what you name your child. Because if you tell your son he's going to be no good like his no good trifling daddy, then guess what? He's going to be just like that no good trifling daddy. Or tell that grandmama, you got to be careful what you say to your granddaughter because you're going to be just like your mama, fast and no Guess what? She's going to be fast and no good. You got to watch what you say words have power, words can, again, build you up or even tear you down. And just for a few moments, I want to break down this particular um, passage. Proverbs, again, 18, it starts with the tongue. It is a muscle. The tongue isn't capable of producing force as a leg or even your jaw, but it's Power is, me is measured by the damage it can do and the life it can give. In any translation, the tongue is in mentioned in the Bible over a hundred times. And so I've always said that we should take great care of the words that we produce. The second thing is it has power, life and death. One way that Jesus is revealed is as the word was made flesh. Words themselves are powerful. God spoke the word into existence. Even in Genesis, God created the heavens and the earth. And all he had to do was just speak that word. The word, it, it, the world was full of darkness. And when he said, let there be light, there was, there was light. Y'all with me this morning. And I want you to know that even in a dark situation, that there, you can speak light to that situation. I don't care what you may go through. I don't care what people say about you at school, young people. You can even look at them and somebody can call you a name and you can say, I am fearfully and wonderfully made because that's who God created me to be. All you have to do is just speak the word. Even though, you know, as humans, we also have power to tear people down Amen. even outside of church but I've learned and I'm only 31 my father he's a pastor senior pastor so I know how church is but sometimes we don't know us as what we call the saints we don't always act like how saints should be I was raised that, you know, you, you be nice and kind to people, even when they are not nice and kind to you. Amen. But one thing that I do know is that, again, when we come to church, everybody not so nice. You know, you, you really want to see, you know, the, the, the saints cut up, don't have no food after church. <laughs> They're cut up in that kitchen. You tell them about some fried chicken. They got it hid in the, in the oven. I made a cake. Where my cake at? You know them in the kitchen. Well, the cake ain't good no way, so we're going to keep it back here. We spend too much time tearing each other down in the house of God. We spend too much time talking about people in the house of God. 
I've learned that sometimes we don't even make it out the parking lot and you, your cell phone already ringing because you having your after church meeting <laughs> on what it is and how service was and what should have been said and what shouldn't have been said and them kids shouldn't have did this and them kids shouldn't have been doing that. And I always say that everyone with advice, all advice ain't always good advice. But again, it has the power of life. And if you want to see these children continue to do better in, in, in school, better in the house of God, you have to continue to encourage them to keep coming to church, keep coming to Bible study, keep coming to Sunday school. Because the only way they're going to keep what they're doing now is if you keep speaking a good word into their life. I was invited, Pastor Reed, maybe, I think it was, this is August now, my months and days starting to come together. It was in July. Um, I went to uh, North Carolina, and I was in North Carolina for a um, youth conference, and I was invited, and the mom, she, well, apparently she was having a hard time. She had a van full of them. Just, she just go open the van up. This is right before church, and I'm getting out the car at the same time. And she, get out the car. Tuck your shirt in. Put your hair in the ponytail. Cut that out. And she just, you know, she got, I think she had about four or five kids. And, you know, they, they were real active getting out that van, jumping out that <laughs> So I could understand why her anxiety was the way that it was. But I went to the car and I told her, I said, just take a minute and just breathe. As parents, sometimes we, you, you say things to your children that you don't necessarily mean, but just in that one moment, that one thing can kill them. And that one thing can hurt them for the rest of their life. My fifth grade teacher told me, you ain't gonna, my science teacher, I remember her, because I'm, I'm waiting to walk past her in Walmart or something. <laughs> on aisle seven, I'm waiting on her. She told me, I know you're not going to be nothing. I know you're not going to be nothing. I can look at you and tell you're not going to be nothing. She even went as far as to say, I don't even know if the garbage truck would even hire you. Now, I'm going to put this disclaimer out there. My mother has not always been saved just because she was going to church. <laughs> and I, I'm going to give you a little backstory, and I'm going to go back to that. Now, I was in special ed. I had resources, resource classes, extra time, because I needed extra time on my test. I needed extra time, I needed some help, some to break down and to, for, for it to get some clear understanding. And in this particular science class, it was hard for me because I still don't know what none of this pouring this and pouring that, what that really had to do with life. But this particular day, we were actually uh, getting ready to dissect a frog. And I was not really interested in looking at a dead frog <laughs> laid out open, and I have to pull out certain parts of this dead frog. And when I told her that I was not interested in doing that, I guess that kind of made her upset. And again, she turned around and she told me, you will be nothing. I know you will be nothing. And again, as I said to you, even now, I am still waiting to walk past her in Walmart. 
just because I want her to say, I thank God that I had parents that spoke over me, that prayed for me to make sure that whatever, because you know, we, 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 can, we can say things and eat, and I, have, I tell my students all the time, when someone does something to you, you have the power and the ability to tell them, I don't like that. Don't do that to me. Now, of course, being in the, uh, I believe I was, I was saying I was high school when she told me that. Um, you know, high school, you, you think you've grown. And so when she told me you wasn't gonna be nothing, and I got a little side mouth with her, and I told her, you know, it wasn't tongues. <laughs> and she had the nerve to tell me, go to the office. And I went to that office, and I sat there and I pouted, and when the uh, assistant principal said, now you know I'm gonna call your mother, and I'm gonna tell her the whole story. And I sat there and I said, oh Lord, I done said all this stuff to this woman and now I'm, I know I'm gonna get in trouble. Both of us gonna be in some trouble. Because we both had no business speaking and saying things over each other. And sometimes we have to look in the mirror because sometimes we can look in the mirror and we can say things to ourselves that can obviously discourage our particular day. Even when you wake up in the morning, you can say, I'm going to have a good day. But sometimes when you get ready to go to work, you know, I just don't feel like being here. I don't have the energy to be here. I don't want to be bothered. And, you know, and then sometimes any little thing can set you off. Power. And those who will love it will eat of its fruit. And those who will love it will eat of its fruit. I'm going to say that again. And those who love it will eat of its fruit. This could be seen as those who enjoy talking a lot. It could also refer to those who respect the power of the tongue. But the former is more likely because even those who did not respect the power of your tongue will eat the bitter fruit produced by talking. Long before there's one character um, that had developed for, I, I would say maybe for a better purpose, a, a person can avoid a world of trouble by minding its own difficult tongue. Sometimes, again, we are so quick to speak, quick to say things, quick to hurt people, and we don't, we don't, we don't wanna build it up. And so even, you know, we, we have so many arrays of scriptures that we can have to say during the day you know, Psalms 46, 1 through 3, God is our refuge and the strength. He's a very present help in the time of trouble. So you should know who to call on when your money looking funny. You should know who to call on when you're, when you're not feeling too well. You should call on that name, Jesus. All you have to do is just speak the word. Even when you don't feel like you have enough courage in Deuteron Deuteronomy 31, 6 and 8, be, be strong and, and be good, of, be of courage. Fear not, nor be afraid of them. For the Lord thy God, he is good. You should be able to speak the word. And how you are able to find these particular scriptures. How are you able to continue to, 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 to encourage your own self? You got to get in your word. Yeah. It's more than just a Sunday thing. Yes, I try to make sure I take out at least one hour right. of my day. If I got to use my lunch break, I take that one hour and I make sure I give something back to God. 
because someone didn't have the privilege to wake up this morning. Someone didn't have the privilege to look through and figure out what am I going to wear today. Someone didn't wake up with an a, 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 a air condition in their house. Even sometimes when you young people are scared and you are fearful of what may come during the day, during school, dealing with buddies, bullies, dealing with uh, uh, peer pressure, you can look at Psalms 27 and 1 and say that the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? You have the power. Even in Nehemiah 8 and 10, then he said unto them, go your way. And sometimes, and I, and I stop right there, is because sometimes you have to go another way from people you know that aren't or mean you any good. Sometimes we tend to follow behind the crowd or we want to follow behind the people who we think are the, the, doing right. And, I, and I've, I've learned, you know, Pastor Reed, you know, that churches sometimes have, you know, they have a little click over here, a little click over there. And I, and I know y'all don't have that problem. But you have to be careful of what click you join in. And everyone, and this morning, we are all in the same click because we all in the click Jesus. We have the power to be victorious. Because if you want to be victorious, all you got to do is say, I am going to be victorious. If you want to be strong, all you have to do is say, I am strong. If you want to be rich, you can say, I am rich. All you have to do is just speak the word. Psalms 37 and 39. But the salvation of the righteous is of the Lord. He is their strength in the time of trouble. Salvation is important. And this is where I am talking to our younger people. And going back to following behind other people. You all have been chosen. You all are special. And it's what you did up here today. I always encourage you, invite someone from your school to visit your church. Let them see what you are doing. Because you can start something and make something, it, it can be small. Choose a Sunday. Your next youth day, you say, hey, what are you doing on Sunday? And even, you are, even if you know they're not doing nothing, invite them to church and let them know what God you're serving, how you are able to continue to pass your classes and, and, and not get into any trouble, right? No trouble, right? Y'all looking like, I don't know, yeah, no, all right? If your parents are looking at you, just look straight ahead and just say yes. <laughs> just, just, just say yes. <laughs> Ephesians, um, it was read to us. Um, 6, 10, finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord. And put on of his might and put on the whole armor of God. Every day, if you don't, if you, you have to go into your mirror and you have to speak to yourself and you have to put on the whole armor of God because there are things that are coming against you. It does not necessarily have to be at home or from, from school. There are people you don't even know that are praying against you and you have to be able to speak the word of God. Yes, sir. 
And that's why in, in Ephesians, I'm going to skip down, it, and, it, and it says, where is it there? Okay, it says, stand therefore. And sometimes you have to be bold enough to stand, have the courage to stand, even when it's not a standing moment. You got to stand up and face it. Speak to that valley moment. Let that valley know it won't always be like this. Because I serve a God who's going to bring me up. And then once I get up, I can stand on top of this mountain. And I can say, Lord, I thank you for bringing me out all right. And I don't know about you, but you ought to thank God that he brought you out. Because there's something that you, that you were in that maybe we don't necessarily know about, but we thank God for bringing us out. I want to do something different, and I'm not sure, it, uh, Pastor Reed, that if, it's, if it is okay, I want us to pray for our young people. And I don't want, you know, this moment to be lost, because um, I came here for y'all today. One thing that breaks my heart is when, you know, and it's been said to me, you know, there's nothing for us to do in church. Oh, I don't like coming to church. For me growing up, this was a, 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 a gas station for me. I got fueled up once I figured out what power I had and who my power was coming from. And sometimes, again, we get so discouraged, and parents, we get discouraged, because sometimes you feel like maybe you're not doing the best that you can, but one of the things that you were doing good is by bringing them right here One of the best things, I wasn't raised with a lot of money. I wasn't given a lot of fancy things. But one of the best things my parents gave me was to introduce me to Jesus. And once I met him for myself, once I got to know him for myself, Life's never been the same. Life has never been the same. And so I'm going to ask if all of you young people, if you would come and just stand right, right in front. Parents, I do want to invite you. Oh. That is such a powerful song. And if we can we can we sing a little bit of that? I need you to survive. This revival that you've been in, it's been something that God has given the vision to your pastor. And I want everyone to leave here today feeling revived, feeling that they can go out to the world and they can speak to whatever you're going through. 
And so I'm going to ask if all of these young people, if you could do me a favor and face me. There is a song that she is playing. And I'm not sure if you guys know it. But do y'all know it? Because most of y'all in the choir. I told you I can't sing, so I'm going to need y'all help. Okay? I need you. You need me. We're all a part of God's love. Stand with me. Agree with me. We're all a part of God's body. Of God's body. It is His will that every need is supplied. You are important to me. I need you to survive. You are important to me. I need you to survive. Now, I'm going to ask the congregation if you could do me a favor. I'm going to ask that if you would do me a favor and stand. And I want you all to sing this to these young people. As you've seen the news, I, have to, I can only watch the news maybe two days out of the week because there is so much going on. Sometimes it's scary to send your child to school. It's scary to put them on the bus. It's scary to trust the teacher who they're hanging out with. It's scary to let them out the car because you don't know what may take place during the day. But I believe that if you speak to them and you speak what may come against them, they're going to be all right. And with Jesus, he makes everything all right. I said with Jesus, he makes everything all right. And you all have that power of a testimony. You ought to thank God that you made it out all right. And so I want you all to sing that song to them. So that during this week, you'll know how much you're important and that your church family needs you to survive. Amen? For me, I love you. I need you to survive. I won't harm you with words from my mouth. I love you. For me, you pray for me. I love, I love you. I need you to survive. I won't, I won't harm you with words from my mouth. With words from my mouth. I love you. I love you. I need you to survive. I pray for you. You pray. Y'all say it like you mean it. I pray for you. You pray. You pray for me. I love you. I love you. I need you to survive. I won't harm you. With words from my With mouth. Words from my mouth. Pray for me. Pray for I me. love you. I love you. I need you. Survive. I won't harm you with words from my mouth. I love you. I need you. Survive. It is his will for
can we say that part that it is his will? It is his will that every can we it, it is his will. It is his will that every need be supplied. Lord, unto me, I need you to survive. Now, would you put your hands together and let's give God some praise for the survival that we've all had to encounter. Just a quick prayer. And if you do have a child that's up here and you're not up here with your child, whether you're a grandparent, whether you're an auntie, whether you're an uncle, come step behind that child just for a moment, just for this prayer. Come on, come on. Church almost over. You gotta look at your watch. We are doing what thus says the Lord, amen. You see, the thing is, it took more than just Miss Alexander to raise Jeremy. It took Miss Maggie. It took Ferris. It took my Linda. It took Miss Smith. It took everybody. So, if everybody can bow your heads and close your eyes. Father God, in the name of Jesus. we thank you all today. We thank you for the children. God, we thank you for the parents of the children. We thank you for the guardians of the children. God, being a child in today's life is not easy. They are presented with so many things that I didn't see until I was grown. And God, we just ask that you be with them. Keep a hedge of protection around them, God, as they go on the highways and the byways to and from school. God, bullies are real. The drugs are real. The temptation is real. But God, we just thank you that we have put the foundation in the children's lives to where that they can know you. They know right. They know wrong. God, continue to be with them. Continue to let them get their lesson and learning and retain it. God, continue to let them be the beacon of light in their school to where they can say, it's something different about you. And what is it? And they can say that I know Jesus and I know who my provider is. God, we thank you. God, be with the parents. Continue to strengthen and continue to build them up. It's not easy being a parent in today's time, God. God, so many temptation comes towards the parents. Parents don't know whether they should work or whether they should be at home with the child or whether they should, you know, it's just a lot that goes on in a parent's mind and they just question, am I doing enough? Am I enough to be a parent to lead my child the right way? And parents, God says you are more than enough. Continue to let the parents to sit down and have Bible study with the children, to teach their children how to pray, to teach their children the Lord's Prayer, to teach their children how to fast and how to read the Bible and how to study. God, we thank you for this church called Andrews Chapel. We thank you for the children's ministry. We thank you for the youth ministry. We thank you for the young adult ministry. And God, we just want every child under the sound of my voice to know that they are not in this life alone. They have their parents, they have their grandparents, they have adopted aunties, adopted uncles, adopted friends, whatever it is that they may need, they can come to anyone here in this church and they will be able to get what is needed. God, we thank you for that. Many churches cannot say that they do that, but we do. And God, for that, we say thank you. Whatever it is that every family that is associated around this altar may need, God, I ask that you meet them right now at their point in need. Whether it's a healing in the household, whether it's better behavior in the household, whether it's some food in the household, whether it's clarity in the household, God, whatever it is, we just ask that you give it to them right now in the name of Jesus. God, we love you and we thank you. God, we know that if you have done it before, you can do it again. 
If you allow me to retain my lesson, you can have my children retain their lesson too. If you can have me be better with conduct, you can have the bad children be better with conduct too. And God, for that we say thank you. And God, as we prepare to go out into this world, continue to keep a hedge of protection around us. Let this be the best school week that we have ever encountered in our whole matriculation through school. The kids will go to school, they will retain, they will do good on their tests, they will do good in homework. People, kids will be tested for the gifted class, kids will be tested for the AP classes. Kids will, no matter what it is, God, we know that you will be able to do it because they are your children. And every promise that has came out your mouth has never returned void. And for that, God, we say thank you. So, God, we will continue to give you all the honor, all the glory, and all of the praise. And yes, in Jesus' name that we pray. And every heart said amen. Amen. And amen. church are open. If there is one who does not know Jesus as your own personal Lord and Savior, just wait, just raise your hand. There's nothing wrong with it. And you don't even have to come up here to the altar. And even if you don't want to raise your hand, just say this prayer. God, I am a sinner. And God, I know that I'm a sinner and I repent for all of my sins. And I believe in my heart that you sent your son Jesus down here to die on the cross and that three days later he rose with all power in his hand and right now he is seated on the right hand of you and he is petitioning on my behalf and if you can say that prayer if you can believe it you are saved just that simple now I'm going to tell you a little secret that don't mean life going to get easier life probably just going to get just a little bit rougher but it's easier even though it's getting rougher because now you've given your life to Christ. So now you're not walking in this life no more by yourself. You got somebody to walk with you, talk with you. Everything that you've heard in this service, you can experience yourself. And if you prayed that prayer, whether you at home, sitting in your living room, whether you at Bedside Baptist watching us on Facebook, call Reverend Reed, send him an email. Say, Rev, I gave my life over to Christ. And Reverend Reed will welcome you, whether it's to our Andrews Chapel family, or whether you are in Alabama, Mississippi, wherever you're watching from, we will find a church close to you that has the same principle and same doctrine in doing the will of God, and we will get you in contact with them. Don't let it go by without giving your life to Christ. But as we continue moving forward, we've moved to where we can move and we can all participate just a little bit in our service, and that's with our tithes and our offerings. Um, we have multiple ways in which you can give. You can go to our website, um, our Andrews Chapel website, and you can hit the donation tab, and you can give your tithes and your offerings there. Or if you would like, you can mail it in to our physical address here, 122 Waterson Street, Jonesboro, Georgia. Or you can mail it in to our P.O. Box, which is listed on our website as well. Or you can schedule an appointment to come by and drop it off here at the church with the secretary. Or uh, just drop it in the little slip, the little mailbox. And we will make sure that it gets accounted for and we continue to do 
the will of the Lord. And as I prepare to pray over the offering, God, we thank you for the blessings in which you have given us. God, we just ask that you take this small token of our offering and our tithes and you continue to let it be neat in the storehouse. Will you continue to allow Andrew's Chapel to do what is needed to build your kingdom and to uplift your kingdom more. God, be with the people that are able to give. Be with the people that are not able to give. God, whether it's they're giving their tithe with money or they're giving their tithes with time, it's still the same, God, and we love you for that. And God, in everything we do, we will give you all the honor, all the glory, and all of the praise. And it's in your son's Jesus' name that we pray. And every heart said amen. Amen and amen. So now I'm going to turn it back over to Reverend Reed as he comes with a couple of announcements. And he comes so we can tell the man that stood in John's shoes this morning that he did an amazing job, brother. We thank you. We bless God for you. Everything that you have poured out, we ask that God pour back into you. God, continue to let God use you. God, I, I thank you, me personally. Me and my daughter were sitting over there talking about your word. Hey, if you can touch her, you said something, all right? <laughs> so we thank you for it. Whoever read and you shout. All right, bring it down. Bring it down, 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 down. Thank God. Thank God today for this worship. And we thank God for you. A couple of things before we have our benediction. We've been here for a minute. And we always want to remind you, we want to keep you safe. So while you're in here, if you're not up here speaking or singing, please keep your mask on. Amen? Keep your mask on. We appreciate that because we want to keep you safe. We don't want you to go to the doctor and have to spend any money because of COVID or anything else. Amen. It's not that God won't keep us. God will protect us. He's done so already. But a shield works best when you, when you use it. Second thing I wanted to simply remind us, we want to ask if all parents and uh, your parents of these children, if you have young folk that were here today, uh, I want to do just a, a maybe a five-minute meeting with our musicians, our music staff, right here. Uh, I want to encourage you to help us. We are coming out of COVID, but as we come out of it, we want to surge forward. Today's theme was resurge. After we've been revived, after we've come home, after we have been revived, after we have recovered, now it's time to surge, to resurge and go forth for the Lord. Um, starting in September, I want to make sure that we have our children's ministries back up and going as best we can. And so I want to have a short meeting, parents, guardians, whomever, with our children and our music director. We need your help. We can't have a choir if you don't bring your kids out. Amen. They don't drive. And if I see them driving, I'm staying off the road. Jesus. We need you to help get them here. Now, for our part, we want to try to have a good, solid hour of rehearsal and let them go. It's school season. They need to study. They need as much. You know, little Johnny can't be bad if he's... If he, uh, if he gets plenty of sleep, he won't be bad at school. Somebody said, oh, pastor, amen. amen. So we want to get them as much rest as we can so that they can go to school and excel and exceed. Um, so we need your help because as we go forth into the rest of the year, there are some plans that we have in place, and we need your help. That's the first thing. That's the second thing. And, and the simply, the last thing is, this has been a wonderful month, and what a way to crown the month. <laughs> Amen. What a way. By coming back together with our children and our youth and speaking to them. Now, we need you to help us by getting your teens and your, your grandchildren, your, those teenagers into church. 
We need them. We, we can't work with them if you don't give them to them, but we need your help with that. Um, many of you know already the devil, uh, Satan is after our kids. Amen. Uh, he's working through other kids to bully them, to challenge them. There's some, you know, there's some fast little girls and some, some, some grown acting little boys that are in school. And we need them so that we can mold them in the next months. Please work with us. Let's get our youth back here. Let's get our children back here so that we can work with them. Uh, again, what a way to crown the month. I want to say thank you to our music staff, uh, to these music leaders, to uh, the music ministry leaders that have been here working along with them. Amen. <laughs> Brother Dexter Broaden, that has been a blessing to us this month, moving us forward. Amen. Amen. To the new inspiration choir that has come forth, and we're looking forward to hearing them again. Hopefully on this first Sunday of September as we come back, we want to hear them again, but we, we'll be looking forward to that and to all of you as we've come out. This day we've been blessed uh, not only with all of these young folk, but thank God for the speaker this hour, <laughs> Minister Tyreef McBride. Come on, let's show him some love. Let's show Minister Tyreef McBride, let's show him love. Amen and amen. Praise God. Thank you so much. It's been a blessing. I'm getting out of the way, looking forward to seeing you again on next Sunday. I saw Felicia, Sister Felicia Hannibal is with us. She says, Brother Kelsey is doing well. We thank God for him. Sister Marie Mitchell, she's with us. Robert is, is coming along, doing well. We thank God for the blessings. And thank God for you this morning. Eyes have not seen, ears have not heard what God has in store for us as we continue to serve him. Minister McBride, come forth, if you would, and, and come up and uh, share with us words of benediction. Our acolyte is coming forward. Uh, I need to see a couple of people uh, just after service as well. Uh, Minister Williams, Minister uh, uh, Mahaffey, who led us. Let's show Jeremy some love. What a blessing. Minister Jeremy Mahaffey today. Uh, Sister Frenda Norwood, I need to see you as well. Uh, God bless you. Let's stand. Minister Tarif McBride. Let's thank God for Jesus one more time. Let's thank God for Jesus one more time. Amen. I pray that what was said, speak the word, has encouraged you. And I know that you have been in a return, revive, and recover stage. Amen. And know that, that this is your moment. This is your time to go out into the world and let them know what Andrew's Chapel is doing over here. Amen. Amen. Let us look to the Lord. Now, God, we thank you for this moment in time. Father, we thank you for the people of Andrew's Chapel. God, we pray that for those who are here in the sanctuary and for those who are online, that they know that it, it has been a safe return. It has been a safe revival. And it has been a safe recovery. And God, we thank you for the research that we have, that has taken place on this morning. And so God, we thank you, we praise you, and we lift you up on high, for we know that there is no God like you. And it is in Jesus' name we do pray, amen.
God bless you. Have a wonderful day. God bless everybody. Good to see you all. Everyone. If you want to know what heaven looks like.